I'm Mari Cartel, LiveScript.com, and this is your Hollywood Health Report. Beauty and the Beast star Austin Basis schools us on diabetes type 1 and 2. I'm sitting here with Austin Basis. That is J.T. Forbes, for those of you playing along, from Beauty and the Beast. He's here for a special reason today, though. We're going to talk about diabetes, because you actually have diabetes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we want to start off with, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. is the difference between type 1 and type 2, because you have type 1. Yeah. And a lot of people are uneducated about how it works and what the differences are. Yeah, so uh, type 1 is uh, actually you're genetically predisposed for having diabetes and it's insulin dependent. So you need insulin to uh, take care of yourself. You can't take a pill and there's no cure at this, at this point in the game, but hopefully soon there will be. So the, a lot of misconceptions people have is that you can take type one and maybe lose weight or get in shape or eat differently and maybe get it under control. That's not the case though, right? Oh no, not at all. I mean, you're, you're on insulin artificial insulin, you need to do that. It's not a dietary thing, it's not a, a weight thing. Uh, there's no way to get in shape and you know eat right and lose type 1 diabetes. So how old were you when you were diagnosed? It was, uh, I was diagnosed about a week before my ninth birthday. Wow. And uh, my dad owned the candy store at the time, so uh, talk about you know taking everything with a grain of salt. <laughs> Uh, and literally a grain of salt now because I can't have sugar. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it, it was obviously uh, a shock to, to my system and, and to my world of playing sports, running outside, you know, uh, not really necessarily watching my diet. My parents were good before I, I got diabetes um, because even though my dad had a candy store, it wasn't like I would go there after school every day and eat all the sugar in the world. Free for all. I, no, yeah, I still, like my grandmother still had, you know, gave me, my candy was Velaments, which was like a sugar-free <laughs> mint candy and, you know, not necessarily kid candy. What symptoms gave you your first clue? What were your symptoms in the beginning? I was a normal size kid, uh, 70 pounds, and, and towards the end of the summer, I had dropped when I went for my, you know, my physical before school was like 61 um, pounds. So I'd, I'd lost nine pounds over the two months. And I was uh, always thirsty, always drink a lot of water, always going to the bathroom, you know, this kind of like a domino effect. And, you know, my, uh, my energy was always low, you know, kind of always wanted to take naps in the middle of the day and you know mouth's always dry and um so they kind of thought it was either diabetes or urinary infection so what was the adjustment period for you as a nine-year-old were you fearful what sort of fears did you have to combat in the beginning getting diabetes equal life equal never having sugar anymore uh so that was like what i interpreted and it was you know crying and you know that's the that's the diagnosis as a kid you can't have candy anymore part of it is like you get put on a diet and you have to eat a certain amount of food at certain times and you have to wake up at a certain time you have to take your blood sugar at a certain time you have to um, take insulin at a certain time, especially when you're not on the pump. Was there an, um, an embarrassment level? Were you a little concerned about people knowing? Were you, were you secretive? I wanted to stand out, but I didn't want it to be because of that. You know, I, I wanted to be because I was good at baseball or I was, you know, elected fifth grade vice president, you know. Did you <clears throat> get elected? I did. Fifth grade <laughs> vice president, eighth grade vice president taking my own blood sugar levels and you know shots and um, I think it did almost give me an advantage uh, and, and, and motivation to be unique in, in ways that uh, were in my control. Can I take a look at your pump? Can I see what it looks yeah. like? <laughs> sure, that is, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Very personal question, I know, but uh, right? yes, uh, I will show you my pump. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, so tiny. Yes, it. There's a lot of buttons, um, and uh, but it's relatively a simple uh, machine to use. 
this is uh, I'm very low right now, so <laughs> you could see that uh, I'll probably need to pump up sometime later today and refill it, and so and 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 pick a new uh, infusion site. And it never messes up. Oh, it always does. Um, and that's you know the insulin pump doesn't mess up. It's the human you know error of the natural flow of your body and, and, and what your calculation is, whether it was right for the meal you had out at <clears throat> the restaurant, because not at, even when you have, uh, you know, the nutritional info on the back of a package, you, you still don't get to the point where it's perfect. It's an inexact science. And that is why I think everyone works, you know, is working towards a cure and, and a little better way of managing it. Well, how much impact does your schedule? Uh, it shows are notorious for that, for long hours. How much impact does that have on your body? Well, it, I mean, I wind up taking, you know, uh, testing my blood sugar probably three or four more times per day. You find out on TV set, <laughs> it's about getting it done, you know, and the, the schedule is constantly going and you don't want to get behind and you do fall behind and so I don't want to be the reason for the schedule to fall behind because I have to drink a juice or take more insulin because my insulin has is, is, is gone high because uh, I ate too much for lunch <laughs> and didn't take enough insulin. You're very much involved with Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation mm -hmm. and did they come to you? Did you go to them and Explain why this is so important for you to be involved. Because I have a, you know, uh, a platform for which I, I could um, provide an example for kids to know that they could live normal lives, um, even with type 1 diabetes, um, is, is important. And so that's, that's what I, um, I guess, take pride in. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking time out with me today. I yeah. really appreciate it. I think this is very useful information for everybody. For more diabetes information, visit our Diabetes Health Center at LifeScript.com. This has been your Hollywood Health Report from LifeScript.com. I'm Mari Cartel. <laughs>